Hello, I'm Dr. Rosemary Francis, Chief Scientist for High Performance Computing here at Altair. High performance computers or supercomputers are critical to so many aspects of our lives. They are used for the weather forecast, they're used to simulate crash testing and safety testing on our vehicles and to design aeroplanes. And a lot of the renewable energy technology today would not be possible without simulation on supercomputers. But what do supercomputers actually look like? To answer that question, I'm going to show you some of my holiday snaps and run through some of my favourite supercomputers. To kick things off, here is a selfie I took outside the data room in Leamington Spa, our UK headquarters. This is a supercomputer used for a lot of our simulation consultancy. At Altair, we're a software company and we sell simulation software. We sell the infrastructure software needed to turn a room full of computers into a supercomputer. And we also sell the whole appliance with everything bundled up so that you have everything in one place already configured. This is a graphic of one of our devices. It's a pretty smart device, um, but unless you know what's on the inside, it can be hard to work out what goes into a supercomputer. So here is a photo of one that's being built. As you can see, it's still in its crate and it's a series of smaller computers flattened so that they stack nicely, all arranged in what we call a rack, which is this large shelving unit with, with integrated power and usually integrated cooling. And some supercomputers are truly enormous. Some of the largest are at universities, such as the University of Texas at Austin. This is their Stampede supercomputer. Now, all of them run Linux operating systems. Uh, this one has got over 6,000 nodes. So a node is a, is a computer that can operate by itself if necessary. So it's 6,000 computers joined together. It's got over half a million processing cores. So it has roughly the same amount of compute power as a small town. And it has over 260 terabytes of memory. So absolutely huge. This photo just captures one end of it. There are more corridors of these racks stacked up in the rest of the room. And it takes a lot to join these together. Here is a photo of a supercomputer being wired up. This is a, uh, a brand new machine that has yet to start working. And all of those cables are the network cables. They actually have another room next door to this server room where they lay out the cables just to get the wiring right. It takes months and months to plug it all in. In order to keep it tidy um, on this machine, they actually use hair bubbles to, to tie the cables together. And it's well worth getting it right because you can imagine this uh, photo, it's not one of our machines and it's not one of theirs. Um, this is a, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you where I took this photo, but this is certainly the sort of mess you do not want to get into when wiring up your supercomputer. And supercomputers, they're, they're not all that big. Here is a room full of separate supercomputers at the Dell EMC Innovation Lab. And here they have lots of separate machines each um, set of racks you can see is actually a separate supercomputer. They're configured in different ways in order to test different operating systems, different file systems and different configurations to, to really push the, the envelope on, on how fast you can make these machines go. Um, obviously, like the movies, they have a load of blinky blinky lights on them. Uh, they are not usually used for diagnostics and they definitely do not turn red or set off any kind of siren when a hacker enters the building virtually or otherwise. So what does a supercomputer sound like? Um, they are usually air cooled on the outside so there is a huge amount of air conditioning and fans um, blowing the air across each of these machines and so it's incredibly loud and incredibly windy. And you can see from this photo, it's great fun standing at the back of these machines when they're running a benchmark or they're running a, a large simulation. And for the most part, these machines are humming away and you can, you can feel that in the room. You can feel that if you put your hands on, on the racks. Um, some machines, such as these GPU machines, have chips that run so hot that liquid cooling and air cooling isn't um, good enough by itself and so these are submerged in oil in order to give 
more effective heat dissipation. There's still liquid cooling to the chips themselves, but the rest of the machine is dipped in oil and you can actually put your hand in and, and feel these machines kind of greasy and kind of hot. These oil cooled machines sit in sort of great big vats, a bit like chest freezers or giant coffins um, in the corner of the data center. And then right at the other end of the scale, we have tiny supercomputers. I'm, I'm not sure this can really be called a, a supercomputer, but it's certainly a compute cluster, a series of, of networked machines that can work together on a, on a single task. And this one's made from Raspberry Pis, uh, some of the smallest devices in the world. So, so really, there's a lot of debate as to what makes a supercomputer. What was a supercomputer in the past is, is really not very performant these days and, and the earliest supercomputers were not as powerful as your mobile phone now. What really makes a supercomputer is being at the cutting edge and really what it's used for, I think, pushing the boundaries of what humanity can do is really what makes them super. Thanks for listening.